Okay, so let's talk about ortho for the board exam. So what do you have to know? You need to be able to recognize the signs of when somebody needs ortho, but also why and how to kind of refer them to an orthodontist. In some cases, dental offices might be able to get started and offer certain appliances, but the more complex treatment and the rest of the treatment is done at the dental office. So I'm going to do a screen share here on the orthodontics class that I have for my VIP board exam prep students you can kind of have a look that way. So let's see here. So what you need to keep in mind is ortho. There's a million appliances that you have to know, but you don't need to know them all for the board exam. Okay. So I'm going to go through some of the more important ones for you. So this is just basically talking about why do you need ortho and what we're looking at. Um, if there's crowding, um, if you notice that the bite is off, too much spacing, not enough spacing, maybe they have too many missing teeth. Typically, we're going to see crowding in a child, right? Um, if the child is 10, we have a pretty good idea if they're going to need ortho or not. Even if the child is six, we might be starting to get an idea. If your patient's 45 years old, we, we would have known for a long time if they need ortho or not. So this is just kind of going over some quick assessments here. So why? What are the goals? Looking at proper um, eruption. So of course, the goal is going to be to have perfectly straight teeth afterwards, right? It's not just about appearance. If somebody has a lot of crowding, it can be very difficult to clean the teeth and they're going to be going in every three months to get their teeth cleaned for the rest of their life because maybe they have really heavy tartar buildup. But if they get braces as a child, perfectly straight teeth means no crowding, easier to clean, everybody's happy. And it does play a role in their appearance. If there's crowding everywhere, you know, overbite, underbite, things look a certain way with your facial profile, people take pride in their appearance. So getting braces is not just about function, but also appearance. Um, headgear these days I find isn't very popular. It's not very common, but often this was used many, many years ago to avoid surgery. Sometimes if the jaw is out of alignment or there's too much of an overbite or too much of an underbite, surgery might be needed to correct that and then braces on top of that. So headgear was used in the past to avoid surgery. I haven't seen headgear in such a long time. I don't really know if people still get it, but in, it's in the more extreme cases. So there's braces and then there's appliances that could be worn as well, either before, after, or at the same time. And then there's retainers for the afterwards, um, either fixed or removable. We will talk about that. Um, so taking x-rays really lets them know what teeth are coming in and how everything works. Um, braces are more and more popular now because people are starting to understand it's not just about appearance. But if there's so many crowdings, it can be very difficult to clean the teeth. And I can't tell you how many times I've talked to adults who say they wish they had braces as a child because it's probably twice the price now, even three times the price. And they don't want to have to go through it now, but they wish they did as a child. Um, so there's different issues, right? There's overbite, underbite open bite and cross bite. So we go through all of these issues in the board exam prep academy. If you're interested, definitely sign up um, dentalL.com. I go through everything with you. But just a quick overview. Um, overbite is when the top teeth overlap. Underbite is when the bottom teeth overlap. Crossbite is when there's different alignments, like the top teeth should overlap the bottom. But if they don't, if the bottom teeth overlap the top in a couple ways, then that's a crossbite. And open bite is when you tell the patient to bite down, but their top teeth aren't overlapping, it's open, that would be an open bite. Um, so how malocclusions affect the oral health, it can affect our speech, appearance, how we chew our food, um, and just making things more uncomfortable, especially for our TMJ, if things aren't perfectly aligned. There's different interventions. I talk about um, hyperdontia, hypo, anodontia, all of this is right inside the course, either having too many teeth, not enough teeth. There's all kind of different issues that could happen. Um, so how do we know they have too many teeth or not enough assessments, x-rays? This is why it's so important. Um, class one, class two, class three, we go through the different malocclusions. Class one, 
is ideal, where the top teeth overlap the bottom teeth, the back teeth fit together perfectly. This is the end goal of ortho is to get to class one. Just some nice little pictures for you. Um, causes and implications of crowding. So thumb sucking is a big one. We need to tell those patients to not thumb suck like when they're little children and tell parents. And this can really avoid ortho. This can save them $8,000 if they don't get ortho. Uh, moving on here, spacing. Too much space isn't good because it can affect the appearance. But spacing in primary teeth is good because that means the permanent teeth have more room to come in. But again, there is such a thing as too much spacing, which can allow for food impactions. Overbite, underbite, we talked about that a little bit. Different types of braces. There's traditional, there's ceramic, and there's lingual. Ceramic causes stain very, very easily. They are clear braces. My sister had those and she loved them though. Um, it makes it, you know, harder to see, especially in photos from a distance. Like people can't tell you have braces because they're like tooth color. They're like white braces kind of. Um, and lingual braces go on the inside. So they're pretty neat. Different appliances. So, um, well, this is an aligner. So, so think Invisalign. This is where it's not braces, but it's a retainer that you would put in for like 22 hours a day. It can only um, help very little misalignments though. It's not made for everybody. Braces is usually going to be recommended unless you have one tooth that's slightly crowded or two teeth. I don't see this very often. It's a lot more expensive and the patient has to be very compliant to wear it all the time. Um, advantages, kind of what we talked about, you, you can take them out so they're easy to clean. Um, people can't see them, but the disadvantages are you have to make sure to wear them like 24 seven and they're a lot more expensive. Um, different types of retainers. So this is done after the braces. You have fixed retainers and also removable. So the fixed ones, I highly recommend. You cannot remove them. They are fixed to the lingual, which I had an image over here. So I much prefer the lingual retainers go on the inside. You don't have to worry about the teeth shifting if this stays in place after the braces. With the retainers that you are supposed to only wear at nighttime, um, people often don't wear them and then the teeth do shift back. Not good. Um, so I talk about different appliances here. This is all inside the course. You don't have to know every single appliance, but I go over the more common ones that you do need to know for the board exam. These are the types of questions that they typically ask is what type of appliance, what they look like. So I have all the pictures there for you. And how does ortho work? So the teeth have to shift, but the bone has to be taken away first pressure applied for that tooth to go in and then the bone starts rebuilding behind it to hold the tooth in place. It takes time. This is why braces don't take six months. They take two years or more because if you try to move the teeth too quickly, the teeth can fall out. Not good, right? So this is why it takes time. Very, very important. So you also need to understand that there's light forces and there's heavy forces. So braces move the teeth a little bit over time, which is why it takes so long. The appliances can help kind of kickstart the movement in certain areas. So those are known as heavy intermittent forces. Um, um, different phases with ortho, we talk about that a little bit, but basically all you have to know for ortho, I mean, I did a quick rundown. If you need more help, I highly recommend the Board Exam Prep Academy. You guys check it out. I will leave the link for you down below. There is a free trial and definitely join Dental L on Instagram where there's always free questions, there's answers, there's mock exam practice all the time to kind of kickstart your studying. Um, but I hope this helps with ortho. There's a lot, but you don't need to know as much as you think for the board exam. Just understand the purpose, understand the assessments we have to do and the appliances that I talked about there quickly. Those are the main things that you have to know about the more common appliances and how ortho works, you know, the bone remodeling behind when you move the tooth, um, how it works and then it happens slowly over time. So let me know you guys, if you have any questions, I am always here to help and thank you for watching. Click like if you like this video and I'll see you in the next one.